average Ghanaian worker would live till 64. You're paying SNET, Social Security, you're investing in pension. But what I'm hearing is that the average pensioner will enjoy his pension for only four years, the average, and die. It means the average civil servant will die four years after retirement. Now, that is sad, but that's the reality. So, um, the Department of Non-Communicable Diseases, or the unit of the Ministry of Health, would oversee 6,400 chips compound. And we have, arguably, one of the best in terms of the system setup of primary care, basic level in healthcare. That's the setup. Thanks to the robust leadership from Ghana Health Service. These 6,400 chips compounds are all over the country. And we have the best tier system, one of the best tier systems in terms of chips compound to, you know, primary, uh, primary health care facilities, etc. Okay, so we have 6,400 chips compound and 1,200 health centers. But to prevent the dangerous outcome we're seeing, we need to train the staff. We need to equip the staff. We need funding. The unit responsible for driving that hasn't got money from the per capita spend. Okay? So to prevent one of the biggest cancers amongst women, which is breast cancer, all you need is to train the nurses at the CHIPS compound and the 1,200 primary health care centers to use their hands and their eyes. Basic breast, self -exam breast examination. But we don't have money to do that. What you need to prevent cervical cancer is a 20 CD test. The more complicated test, you know, which is the, the VIA is 20 CDs. The more complicated test, the pap smear, is 120 CDs. But we can't do that even at the basic health centers. And so in 2020, 2,200 confirmed cervical cancer cases, over 60% died. That is startling. That is sad. That's irresponsible. Now, if you detect cervical cancer early, all you need is a thermal coagulator, and you will treat it. If we sold one Toyota four-wheel drive V8 for somebody high up there, we will buy a hundred thermal coagulators put in one-third of all the districts in Ghana and improve outcome in cervical cancer. So why can't we do these little things? That's my point. I don't know whether it makes Kwame sad or it makes the economists relook at the figures of where we're spending our money, but it is sad. So I talked about if you are in crisis, and yesterday I was talking to uh, a couple of friends at a funeral, and always at funerals I reflect on life. And I was talking about, so we all are at the funeral here, and a few of you medical experts are at the funeral, who's looking after people? Because there was a time when I had an urgent call to find a neurologist. Now, the neurologists look, amongst other things, they take care of all the stroke cases. And two of my friend neurologists were away in Nigeria teaching. One was at a funeral of his father. A couple of them were on vacation, and a couple were out of town, or because they're in Kumasi or wherever. Now, there are less than 12 neurologists for the 15 plus million adults or 32 million population. There are less than 12. I'm not just talking neurologists. 
Interventional cardiologists, they are less than 12. Endocrinologists, they are less than 12. Nephrologists, they are less than 12. Medical oncologists, they are less than 12. That is scary. In the country. I'm sure there are more in New York City or New York State who are Ghanaians. Trauma specialists, same. Of course, we've made some advancements because two and a half decades ago, you couldn't count female gynecologists on one hand in Ghana. But we've made advances. Family physicians, thankfully, for those who have the insight to put up places like the College of Physicians and Surgeons, we have trained a number of family physicians and other specialties. I remember when you, know, you could count the number of doctor anesthetists on two hands in the entire country. So when they put you to sleep, it was nurse anesthetist. And they didn't have enough to have a pre-theater assessment. So we've come some way, but have we come far enough to change the outcomes? Because health is wealth. Um, the average life expectancy in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania have overtaken Ghana. And in Kenya, wait a minute. So once I was at a very nice hospital. They have good facilities. Somebody had been rushed from the mining site all the way to Accra. And so I asked the driver at the entrance of the accident emergency, how long have you been driving? And he said, well, a few hours. And um, there was a Kenyan person I was with who said that in Kenya, even from the middle of a front planes, an air ambulance will lift you. This is not Singapore, okay? This is Kenya. An air ambulance will lift you and take you to Kolebu 37, you know, University of Ghana Medical Center or whatever. The system works, and the per capita spend on health care is less than ours. So, again, how do we focus on the other indicators aside the mortality and the survival birth rate? I'd like us to take a second look at the quality of care in terms of service delivery. What is your patient experience after spending all this per capita when you, you drive into a hospital, when you're rushed into a hospital? What is the quality of life with respect to health care delivery? If you are ill, if you have a chronic condition, how are you looked after? What is the access to health care? And access to health care is not access to the buildings because some of the buildings, nothing happens there. Access to health care means a facility, trained personnel, processes and systems working to ensure that we will do everything medically possible to keep every patient alive if it's possible. That's where we should be measuring where we're spending our money. Preventative health. What are the lifestyle indicators? What are the disease outcomes? What is the probability of somebody who has a stroke or a heart attack surviving in Ghana versus that same person surviving in Kenya versus that same person surviving in Rwanda? and then versus that same person surviving in where we want to benchmark ourselves in the developed world. You know, so I used to argue with people that say the French medical system is much better than the American medical system, but the American medical system at the cutting edge if you have money, yes, it can do anything, it can do magic. But the average person, whether a cabinet minister or a laborer who gets pregnant, they won in France is assured of excellent medical care till delivery. 
Now, if you take the level of taxation for those who pay taxes here, you're being taxed the same as the level of taxation in France, if you're in the higher bracket. So is this quality of care possible? Yes, because I have known small clinics here taking care of mother and child, maternal and child uh, health, who have in 10 years delivered maybe close to 1,000 babies and touch wood, haven't lost one baby. And what does it take? Simple things, simple monitors, commitment of the team, monitoring, constant improvement, keeping track of your data and quality of care, setting standards in procedures. That's where we need to go to. Um, it's what does good look like and how will we get there? First of all, I think that in terms of disparity in service delivery, we should come to a point where whether you're rich or poor, you can be guaranteed a certain level of service. In here, okay, but maybe you do a wrap. I'll and do then a wrap. Other up. opportunities here. Okay. Yeah. So again, you know, just to wrap up, I think that in April the healthcare minister bemoaned the fact that, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping that the uh, journalist got it wrong, but he said that the health insurance system wasn't working. I don't know why, because he went to Rich Hospital and had to pay out of pocket but he had his health insurance card. No bed syndrome is a matter of the processes not working. In short, where do we need to get to? We need to, and you can quote me on this, we need to democratize healthcare to the extent that the democracy cannot adversely affect the healthcare outcomes. We need to democratize healthcare to the extent that democracy cannot adversely affect healthcare outcomes. We need to improve our human capital and ensure that a system is functional enough not to offer wide disparities in healthcare delivery. The system should ensure that democracy is forced to deliver the desired outcomes to the people and be accountable for every city and dollar spent to improve healthcare outcomes, reduce the disease burden, improve the quality of care, and improve access to care and quality to life. COVID-19 has taught us that yes, we can. Ghana performed amongst the very best in the world with the same healthcare professionals we have today. So under the duress of COVID, we prove that yes, for every dollar spent, Ghana can deliver the desired outcomes. Can we translate that to the rest of healthcare delivery? Thank you.